Uh, so welcome everyone to the Prison Math Pro uh, the Prison Math Project podcast. Uh, this is the very first episode for so for those of you who don't know the Prison Math Project uh, is this it's this great organization that uh, was put together by Christopher Havens who's uh, currently still incarcerated uh, where it it hooks up uh, mathematicians with uh, people who are in prison and interested in mathematics, wanting to uh, further their education while they're in there. And, and it sets up this pen pal system. And uh, well, some people might think, uh, well, that's the last thing I'd want to think about uh, while I'm there is math. It's actually been a pretty transformative experience for a lot of people. Uh, so I'll be putting the link uh, down below in the description to the uh, prison math uh, project and possibly to an interview with Christopher. Uh, but today we have uh, the, the most fitting person for our inaugural interview. Uh, we have Marshall Byers, who was actually Woo! a uh, participant of the PMP and uh, has recently been released. So hello, Marshall. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Freedom feels so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. So yeah, do you want to just give, uh, uh, give us a, a brief introduction uh, about yourself? Yeah, my name is Marshall Byers. I've, I've been out tomorrow. It'll be two weeks, fresh out of prison, uh, enjoying my new freedom. Oh, my goodness. I did 15 years and like two days. And when I released, the feeling is so overwhelming. It's so wonderful. Uh, it's beyond uh, descriptive words. And I've been struggling with that, actually. People have been asking me, like, what's it like being out of prison after 15 years? And I, of course, giggle a little bit and I just say, you know, imagine your, 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 all your Christmases and your birthdays and your special vacations and um, even having children for the first time. It's, it's all that every single moment uh, for me uh, is bliss. Uh, the flowers smell better. The grass is greener. Uh, the air feels, uh, smells fresher. And I'm walking a little taller. It's just, um, it's very amazing. I have a lot of support, a lot of encouragement. And I'm ready to, I'm ready to get into some education. Yeah. So you're, you mentioned you're actually starting uh, this fall. Yeah, I start Bellevue College uh, September 27th. I have one, uh, have one class on campus two days a week, and then I have two online classes, uh, which is English and math. And just so you all know, if you're wondering what my first class on campus will be. It's contemporary dance. Okay. I'm here to have, I want to have a little fun too. Why I, I do some of the serious stuff. So I'm not yeah, afraid to get, admit it. Got to get yourself moving. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got a lot of energy and I, I'm so excited to start college and I'm looking forward to getting involved with the PNP and keep chipping away at my, at my math skills. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So so how, uh, how did you first find out about the PMP? How did you get uh, involved in this? So Christopher Havens and I, we had worked together in, the, in, in laundry. And mm. he, we met about the same time where I had ran out of excuses. I had done every class, every course uh, for self-help. But then somebody asked me, well, why wouldn't you do education if they have to offer it? And I realized, well, I ran out of excuses. I, I had no good excuse to not do education with the rest of my time. But I said, if there's anything to do with math, I'm, I'm not even, I wouldn't even attempt it. There's no way. Mm. And Christopher came over to me and, and someone expressed that he was really big in the math. And I had asked, I had actually asked him like, Hey, what are your suggestions? If, cause they told me I had to take a placement test, but I, I, I wasn't ready. And he goes, well, how, how about this? While we're at work, I will bring some packets and I'll kind of go over some things with you just to raise your awareness a little bit of maybe what you're in for as far as the placement test goes. So that oh, was so while initial. you were working laundry, that was, uh, <laughs> that, that was your first math lessons. Yeah. So really, I guess I was getting paid to get tutored and so was he, so was Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was, you know, like 42 cents an hour or maybe, maybe it was a little more than that at first, but right. Right. Yeah. So oh, that's that great. was, yeah, that was my big interaction. And then of course I proceeded to let him know my 
math anxiety was so intense that just even knowing like he was bringing a math packet the next day to, to work, I was became very stressed, tense, aggravated. Uh, I already started wanting to back out, a lot of doubt. Uh, and then I, of course, the next day when he showed up to work, I got to express like I'm expressing to you uh, a little bit about my um, going to school as a kid and my math experience. I, I absolutely hated it. I didn't want anything to do with math. And then once I realized I was getting behind, my teacher was like, well, if you're falling behind, you're, you're going to get an F and we're just going to flunk you out of the class. And so that, that was continual, my experience of being frustrated and having to, you know, not be accomplished in learning math. And so I just, I never wanted to learn again. Wow. Yeah. I think in the, uh, there was the uh, PMP newsletter that came out. It was mentioned yeah. that uh, Christopher said you had uh, one of the worst cases of, of math anxiety he had seen. <laughs> yeah, I used to actually throw up and my body would become so tense and I would get, uh, it was like, uh, I, at the time too, I was dealing with a lot of uh, emotional trauma from my first uh, part of the year or two in prison mm. that what I had been through and I remember just like explosive anger was coming up. Like I, he would send me a packet home from work and I would look at just one problem and two and try to like figure out something that's really easy, start small. Mm. And I would, I would just end up crumpling the paper up and throwing it against the wall. And like, I can't do this. It was, I was so overwhelmed and I would get hot flashes and mm. start sweating and uh, I would even tear up. Wow. Yeah, it was intense, man. And, you know, it's I've come a long way. I, I, I'm so appreciative for his patience, Oh, his patience. And that was the thing I had feared, too. Well, OK, here's another quote teacher willing to help me. But mm. my frustration and my insecurity that I'm not good enough. And he just said, look, we're just going to start very small, very small. And then I would do one problem and then say if I got it wrong, he would explain we would put all the paperwork away and we've just worked that one problem hmm. until i completely understood it and it just built the tiniest bit of confidence but still having the anxiety and the the nauseousness and still wanting to be violent with math even though math just uh <laughs> you can't really hurt math <laughs> no no but yeah. yeah so you know continuing if um expressing more of that where I, I, I took a placement test and I didn't do so well. However, they still, I got into the, the business course as associates of technical arts degree, mm. but to, to also bring into the story is my head, my Sally at the time had been through this course and he had encouraged me. He said, there's a lady down there. She's an instructor from Edmonds. She will never leave you behind, no matter how long it takes you to get this course done. It was two years at the time. Mm. She, he had encouraged me that with Christopher Havens helping me with math and with an instructor encouraging me and not letting me fail and get behind, I was like, now I have no excuse. I, I must accomplish this. And so I went forward with, I just, I jumped completely in. Well, that's great. And, and now here yeah. you are, you're, you're yeah. out and you're going to college. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so incredible. And you know, there's a long story. Obviously it's a lot to express and share in this uh, small zoom meeting. However, I know we got plenty of time to, you know, to pull it all out of my, my memory and my experiences, but you know, that was quite a while of Christopher and I working together at work. However, it was such a small part of, today like where i'm at because once i started getting into school there was only one class and it was business math and so you know there was two years of school but it was only one quarter with one class in it so i really didn't get too big into math and but then i realized through my goals and my dreams had started to change and if i wanted to go to college when i got when i got out that i was really going to have to start learning like getting up to speed. Like I, I felt like I was basically like in uh, elementary math and just maybe a little bit of um, like middle school, like sixth, seventh and eighth grade math. Mm. And, and also with the frustration and the math anxiety, I thought, 
I have, I have to tackle this or else there's, I'm, I'm never going to make it. And then another program started up before I'd been there. It was through the university of Washington called hope. It was, I think the acronym was, um, helping, helping inmates. Uh, I forget what the acronym means. I'm sorry. It, anyway, they used to come in and, um, help us with uh, math or with um, other educational aspects of how they can better support us while we're in prison and also bridge the gap for education when we get out. Um, so they had started a math class and Christopher Havens had said, hey, this was probably about a year later. And Christopher said, hey, there's, we're going to start learning some math and uh, we're all going to start in the beginning out of this book and you're more than welcome to join us. Well, of course, I had reservations. However, I, I went ahead and signed up. And once again, the class, it was in a classroom setting. It was, I think it was just like maybe math 77, if I remember right. And we, they started up on the whiteboard in a classroom setting. Now everybody is in different levels of learning at this point. Mm. And for me, as soon as they, um, the instructor started, it wasn't Christopher up on the whiteboard. It was someone else from the University of Washington. Mm. As soon as she started doing a problem up on the board, asking, hey, does everybody understand? Or are we, can we move on now? Immediately, hot flashes, mm. body tension. And I started sweating and getting frustrated. And I, was, I checked out. And of course, now all the tension's on me. And they're trying to help me understand where we're at in the problem. And I, I just said, I, I said, I'm out. I'll, I'll just sit and listen. And then that's when I knew if I don't, if I didn't get a tutor or get my arms around this math anxiety, that there was no way I was going to make college once I hit the street. Mm. Yeah. So of course, Christopher came alongside me in his kindness and his compassion and his understanding and his patience. He said, let's set up a time. We're in the same unit. I'll work however many days, however much time you need. You got, I, had, I think I had about two years left or maybe a little less before I'd gotten out or before my release date. So we did it. We got permission to start meeting two, three days a week. And the rest is history. Here I am encouraged and motivated and inspired to tackle college. Even if I had to do seven days a week of math, I have so much support, so much in confidence, and oh, I'm just so excited. Like the encouragement too from everybody, and everybody's just on my team. Like they want to see me succeed, and people want to help me. So I'm I'm ready. I'm completely. I'm, I'm all the way in. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what you know. Just starting small and those small steps, bringing it down to the the fundamental yeah. level, and. And you mentioned and a, a number of times patience, you know, that's, I think, one of the most <laughs> valuable skills to have in a, in a math teacher is, uh, yeah, someone who's patient. Yeah. And, you know, with Christopher, too, like, say, for instance, a small example of our, we're, we would go in a little room or sometimes we'd have to sit in the day room with a lot of distractions, which was difficult for me. But, mm. like, again, Christopher would always encourage me and we would stop and take a break and um, take some, I would do some breathing exercises. And like, if I was struggling with one problem, we'd close the book and set all that stuff aside. And he would do example after example, and maybe even change a little bit. And I realized that there wasn't, there's not always just one way to solve a problem. Mm. And sometimes he would even write it out in, in English, you know, uh, how to understand a problem. And then he would write full, like I saved, I, I saved so much of the stuff that we had did, like the, the scratch paper. Mm. And he, you know, he had stacks of scratch paper too. He would say here, and I would like, all right, I'm going to be going through a lot of scratch paper. And, and some of the scratch paper happened to be things that he'd worked on with his uh, past math experience and some of the um, problems he was tackling or some of the notes he was taking to himself. And I realized it was so encouraging for him to be patient with me that it gave me the inspiration to just kick some butt as far as like, if he's willing to teach me, I'm willing to do the work. Mm. and he expressed that too he goes hey i can show you this all day long but if you're not willing to do the work and study that you're gonna not retain much and you're gonna continue to be frustrated so that was another aspect for me to internalize like okay i have to do the work 
Yeah. And a blessing was as soon as we started the Hope uh, program with the University of Washington, they we went into COVID. So it was a lockdown and I got stuck with a book and having no help. Mm. So, but I had just gained a little bit of confidence where I'm like, all right, I just, I tackled the books and he had given me some other books to reference and it was encouraging. I'm like, oh my goodness, I was getting one problem. And then that turned into a whole page and I couldn't wait to show him and to have him check my answers. And it, it built a lot of confidence. And for me with math, that, that was giant growth. That's a kind of, kind of fortunate uh, timing that you, you had just enough time to sort of, you know, get your bearings. And then it was like, okay, now challenge mode. You're, you're alone with this book now. Um, <laughs> and that it kind of, it gave you just enough that you could, oh, okay, sort of struggle on your own with it. Yeah, yeah. And likewise, you know, when I finally brought my papers over there, there was a few I'd struggled on. And he always said, if you have a problem with one and you get stuck, set it aside and go back and, and do some of the easier problems so you can uh, retain it, but also not get so frustrated where now you're stuck on one problem and now nothing else matters other than trying to get one problem solved. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, and going back, right. Sometimes, uh, sometimes one of those easier problems ends up being an easier version or something. And you see the, the trick or, you know, sometimes yeah. your, your brain's doing stuff in the background, you know, when you're not even thinking about math, sometimes yeah. it's doing stuff back there. And you, next time you come to the problem, you go, Oh, was I, was I dumb? Why, why didn't I see this before? This was, yeah. this was, of course I see the answer now. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And, and yeah. he would say the same thing too. And he would encourage me. He was like, Hey, you know, be right before, you know, you're studying something, you know, uh, do it right before you go to sleep at night. And he said, sometimes you retain it, you know, it's not proven yet, but a lot of studies have been uh, shown that if you wake up and get right into math, you retain a little bit more, or mm -hmm. maybe if you're stuck on something, you're right. Like I had went to sleep struggling with something and then I woke up and I re retried the problem and I, and I got it. And then I'm wondering what was it that I got stuck on? And so I realized too, like back with the frustration and being a, a stressed out over something that my thought process wasn't relaxed enough to really focus on the problem itself. Mm. So there is, you know, and I, I do realize there's, it's going to be a struggle moving forward. However, Christopher Havens has helped me gain enough tools and understanding on how to study and put time aside and just really get into it that I know I'm going to make it and it's going to be just fine, even with the stress. And I, I, like I said, I have a team of people and tutors and friends that are willing to help. And for me, that it, it helps with my confidence as well, because like I said, with the instructor from Edmonds, Miss McKay, when she said to me, Marshall, I will never let you fall behind. I'll always encourage you and you will not fail. To me, that was like, okay, so I'm going to give it my best. And even if I don't get the best grade, like I'm going to pass, I'm going to learn and I'm going to be, uh, you know, gain some confidence in education moving forward. Mm. Yeah. And I just like, I started like feeling excited to go to school. It took a while. And then I met Ruth as well. And Ruth had really helped me in college. She was one of, uh, one of our students or one of the students in my class. And she had helped me a ton. And then also Rory, uh, another friend of mine, a mentor that I was doing prison time with in our, in our unit. He's also on humanme.org. And I, so many people have helped me. Like even before I got out, there was a team of people helping me through prison education. And hmm. I just, I realized like I need help when I go through education and some of the struggles in life. And I realized that that's okay. So it's, it seems like where you were, there was a, a pretty decent support network uh, happening there. Do you think like, uh, and it seems like it was a number of people who were also uh, incarcerated there. So is it like, do they have pretty good programs set up in there? Or was it just sort of happenstance that a lot of these people got together and started pulling each other up? Well, there's like a core group of us you know, uh, like two units used to be able to go to yard together. And then all four units, you can go to the library and meet 
for you know meetings and then there are also there are other classes and courses and well for instance i know a bunch of us that i just mentioned rory ruth and christopher we all uh were in the sewing room together uh making quilts so you can schedule blocks of time where you know four it was crowded but so out of the four of us at one time on the weekend there was always two of us hanging out together talking or we would meet out in the out in the prison yard and we had a little spot that we would sit you know in a square and, and just have talks like you and i are talking now about life about our struggles uh about hope and and our future and the guys used to they would always come up and tease me they're like oh so you're hanging out with christopher havens now huh? you think you're going to learn a little bit of math and i said look even if i didn't learn any math Christopher Havens is such an incredible individual. Uh, other, I mean, other than the math too, he, he is an incredible artist and a friend. And like I said, back to the patients thing, and he was a, a super funny coworker too. We'd have so much fun at work. I'm like, maybe we should be paying them for working. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all used to work together. And so yeah, over over time, like we just all became really good friends and mm. they knew my struggles and they were like, look, anytime you need help, these guys were willing to put all their schedules aside to help me succeed because I was they knew that I was going to be the first one to be released out of the group. So um, you so you were catching flack from from other people for trying to uh, get involved with with this for, for yeah. bettering yourself mathematically. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Guys would uh, talk crazy. And, you know, especially too, when I started signing up for school, people would ask me, where are you going? I'm like, Oh, Hey, I, I, ha I have college classes today. And they would spew their ven venom as far as like how much they hated education and, mm. and it didn't matter. None of that stuff mattered. And why are you wasting your time? I mean, I heard things from, from A to Z across the gamut. Mm. And, but it, but I also internally thank them because as they say, these uh, negative um thanks to me i had to reflect and process like well is there any truth to that and also why am i doing what i'm doing and so uh mm. of course i didn't encourage them to say more of that to me but it was a challenge you know i'm like well why am i doing education why am i taking time out of working out and doing um things like other people are doing around that um cause no stress like you know playing cards all day or watching tv i mm. um I wanted to take advantage of the teachers that were surrounding me, uh, which was Christopher Havens. And, and like I said, oh, I, lost, I lost your video there. There we are. There we go. Are we back? Hey, we're back. <laughs> yeah. So, someone was calling me on the phone. I'm like, uh-oh. First, ah. <laughs> first, first tech uh, issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, once I establish myself in prison as far as my reputation goes and my and my character you know there's still there was always people talking crazy but mm. i i loved it knowing like man i i got a i got a math tutor that makes math himself so i'm like if he's willing to come down to my, my level which he never he never you would never have known like his level of math i mean he he could teach first graders and with all compassion and love and and he just really he really he makes it fun too which at first i didn't want to admit it because i said i always hated math but i'm like okay mm. uh, math and i are we're getting to be friends <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate math anymore but the minute that i said i loved math i didn't realize i said it and we oh, were yeah. sitting <laughs> Chris, christopher and i were just sitting, <laughs> hanging out by ourselves after a session and he goes, you just realized what you said. <laughs> and I, I'm like, what? What I say? He goes, you said you loved math, and I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's so, like it's like in one of those uh, rom com, you know, one of those yeah. romance shows, or so someone accidentally like, like, oh, I love you. And they're, oh, 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 what did I say? <laughs> yeah, I <can't> take back. <laughs> and you know, I, I literally like, I teared up from his recognition of my growth and realizing like where i was at in my math and my math maturity and then where i was at to my release that it was like a sigh of relief like wow like i'm i'm gonna be prepared i'm gonna be prepared for college just and even enough just to get over that that math anxiety to where like i'm fully in i'm ready 
and you know, there's, there's so many stories in between here and there. Right. But like our experience and of Christopher and I working together, had it not been for him, there, there's no way there's no, I wouldn't know. I would be on a trajectory of life of doing something else. <laughs> and the, of course the PNP. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that that's the idea is that, you know, the, uh, now the, the, the PMP doesn't have to be localized that hopefully we can start, uh, you know, spreading these ideas, these mentalities yeah. to, uh, to other prisons, um, across the States right now. And who knows, maybe, maybe other, maybe other countries in the future. Yeah. I feel like I'm the mascot. I got my hand on my hip right now. I'm like, Hey, where's my mascot? <laughs> Like I'm the first one out to um, have the story. And then what was also incredible was uh, the day before I got out, Christopher Havens is jumping up and down, down here in like the day room. And I, I, he was waving his arms and I thought like, what is, is he got bad breath or something? Cause he was just like, you know, doing one of these things, mm. <laughs> getting my attention. Well, he had got the first copy of the first uh, PMP newsletter. And of course I ran down there and he opened it up on the ping pong table and told everybody like, Hey, we need, we need a minute. And like my a tears welled up my eyes, like seeing my picture and then being in a newsletter and then reading my story with Claire. Oh, I just, I was so, so dang over the moon. Like I couldn't express myself so happy, full of joy. And I kind of did a little jumping up and down too, uh, you know, <laughs> It was wild. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And that was yeah. pretty recently, right? Like the first newsletter just came out. Was it this year or was it 2020? Well, I don't know. I, I guess I don't know if it was the first one, but it was the first one I saw. Mm. And I was so it was kind of a big deal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then I got out the next day. Oh, it was the next. Oh, it was the next day. Right. So yeah. it was this. Yeah, it was this year. It was this year. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it was June twenty second because I got out the twenty third, and I just I was beside myself. I'm like, I need a copy of this, and he's like, Well, you got to talk to Jack. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait. And of course, Jack's uh, has, uh, I guess, sent a bunch in the mailbox. I'll be receiving them any day now. Mm, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna pin them up around town. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, Christopher's stories in there, too, and a few other things. And seeing that was like complete confirmation, you know, mm. like, all right, I'm in a newsletter. I've got a little bit of math confidence and I start college in a few months. It's real. And I'm just over the I'm over the moon about it. Yeah. So in college, uh, of course, you're you're taking a, a dance class for some uh, for some fun and movement while you're there. But. Uh, you're doing business and I did you also mention sociology something about sociology you were thinking yeah so my goal is to earn a BA in sociology from the University of Washington the business aspect was just what they had to offer in prison mm. so I would have I would have taken holder culture in prison I would have taken any college class and which I did I, I took I did everything they had to offer mm. uh but yeah, so I'll finish my uh, AA at Bellevue, and I got some other classes I would like to do too that lead up into sociology, so I can get a little bit of experience and exposure to that. And but I had been encouraged too by the navigator Jana at through Edmonds, which she's been a great help, and even the dean Kristen Morgan at through Edmonds in the prison there, and uh, some other education teachers and. They're like, look, you don't have to have a major picked. Just get in, get your feet wet, start getting some classes. And you never know, like there might be something else that piques your interest and you can go all in for that. So just, you know, stay flexible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's an important thing to keep in mind uh, for, for anyone uh, going into college or university is, uh, I mean, it's, it's good to be set on an idea on a, on a dream of like what you want to graduate with, but you also like, you have no idea what direction you're going to get pushed in, you know, the, the other, just even the other people you'll meet, you'll find out what they're doing, or, you know, yeah. you might take a couple classes and you'll realize, Oh, this isn't like, this is not what I expected it was, or something else might grab your attention and you'll go, Oh, this sure. is, this is the new thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> you never but know. I mean, if you do, if you do graduate with a degree in sociology, then uh, yeah. uh, I mean, the the idea of this podcast will probably be talking to a lot of uh, sociologists. So maybe one day you'll be back on here uh, as a sociologist. Heck yeah. <laughs> You know, my goal, my motivation in life, I, I realized my purpose. I love to motivate and encourage and inspire people and see the change and to ter help turn their dreams into reality. And, and I'm living proof of that, that right now there's a brand new dirt bike sitting out in my garage with all brand new gear and all the support and that faction too. And, you know, I've already been on a hike and everything that I've chipped away at with my, as far as like my dreams and putting it down on, on a piece of paper and then slowly but surely incrementing little tasks and like, how do I get there? And how do I, you know, how do I accomplish these things? And uh, I really want to be a life coach and motivational speaker, but aside the monetary aspect, like I'm going to do that regardless if I, have ever, if I ever get paid for it. I love people and I love that so many people have invested in me and the difference it's made in my life. And I, I just, I want to give back hundred percent. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I know, Marshall, heck yeah, buyers. What the heck? <laughs> 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 Woo. So yeah, are you uh, are you thinking you'll uh, be be a pen pal on the other side for the PMP now? Absolutely, I would love it. You know, even obviously, I, I feel like I'm still such a, a baby as far as math goes, like a, mm. like maybe a two year old. <laughs> However, the aspect of of motivating somebody with their life goals and, you know, encouraging them to, you know, dig in, especially too, with the prison time, like you can really get into some, some, you know, strategic planning and goal setting and, you know, get some things going, you know, get like a visual. I, I myself, I love having a visual aid because like having that dirt bike over those years, like I, I, that's always been my passion. And mm. when I started working, for instance, I would work one day and I would, uh, realized like, Hey, I earned a bolt for my dirt bike today. And that turned, <laughs> that turned into a, you know, a whole box of bolts. And pretty soon I'm like, I got a back tire and you, you mm. get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as far as giving back to being a PNP, uh, mentor, uh, I, I would love that. That's very motivational for me to give back to, especially for me to know and for the other individual to know that I've been through this, that I can relate. Yeah, so I guess uh, for anyone uh, watching, I, I should make a quick plug. P the PMP needs uh, volunteers. You know, of uh, there's there's people uh, with all sorts of mathematical needs. People who are starting off at the level of uh, of Marshall here, uh, uh, where he was a few years ago. And there's you know there's some people who are who are interested in some higher level mathematics as well. The the person I've been uh writing to is is interested in some like university level number theory so anyone watching you know if you it, it's it doesn't even take all that much time necessarily i mean i i like to put a lot of effort into my letters but you know they come once a month or or sometimes less sometimes more so uh yeah please please consider like i said every the link's going to be in the description below so uh please, yeah. please check it out Woo. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good plug. <laughs> <laughs> How exciting, you know, just overall, you know, aside from our conversation, like waking up this morning, it's literally like that, that Christmas morning feeling like, you know, presents under the tree and family coming over and good food and, and just, you know, like self care and being healthy and having, having a purpose for me, it's, it's so incredibly helpful. Like, like I said, I, I go to sleep thinking about our zoom call. And then waking up, I'm like, okay, am I, am I prepared? And a little bit of that anxiety comes in, like um, maybe I, I won't remember something or, you know, uh, I basically, I just been doing some self care as far as telling myself and encouraging myself, like no matter what, I'm showing up, I'm clean and sober and I'm open and willing and being, and being flexible. So here I am. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, why, uh, before, uh, uh, before we started recording, you're telling me a, a little bit about your, uh, your choice of clothing style and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and what's inspired it and why you're not going back to other styles. You want to uh, maybe say something about that? Yeah, look, all right. Prison has a whole lot of monotony in it. And even the clothes they give you, you know, white socks and white shirt, 
and white boxers and khakis. And I need some color in my life. And I remember thinking, you know, I, when I get out, I was telling my friends and my family that I need something wild and crazy. When I get out, let me grab my shoes too, just to do a little show and tell. Mm. I was like, hey, I need wild socks and shoes and shirts and I need color and all that nature. And so I was like, I never want to wear anything monotonous again. Although I don't want to be in a clown suit. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, let me let me fire these babies up here. So, oh here's, yeah, uh, oh yeah. Here's one, of, here's one <laughs> of my shoes. Oh, this one. Here we go. I fixed it. I'm still uh, figuring out the tech stuff. Oh yeah. So these are gold high tops, and <laughs> <laughs> I um, love it. I love it. Yeah, you know, and. They might be my nightlight at times when I need to get around in my bedroom. And so I just fire up my shoes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I got socks with pizzas on them with uh, pink bananas and all kinds of <laughs> wild socks like that. And I've been getting compliments. And like I said, no more monotony. Yeah. And Claire's yeah. been giving me a hard time, too. Who, who, sorry, who's been giving you a hard time? Claire Fennelison. Uh, uh. She she is our editor or she's involved in the PNP. I actually right, forget right, her right, title, right. but she's been an incredible uh, support for me as well. And her sense of humor uh, is mm -hmm. next, next to none. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. She's up there with you somewhere up in Canada. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I saw, yeah. I saw when I was, I was reading the newsletter the other day, I saw. Uh, oh, you guys haven't met? No, we have, we haven't, uh, no, we haven't uh, for, formally met yet. Oh goodness! You must meet Claire. <laughs> well, yeah, you but know, yeah, maybe, as far as like, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm starting to to get a bit more involved with the organizational side of PMP. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe I can organize some some time for uh, uh, some of uh, some of us on the organizational end to get together, sure. and have a Zoom chat or something. Yeah. Absolutely. And I look forward to as well. Like I've talked to Jack on the phone uh, once or twice and a few emails. And uh, like I said, you, you, having your guys' support has been such a relief. It really is, you know, with the tech stuff that I'm struggling with, like the phones and my laptop that I had, I've, I've turned it on. That's as far mm. as I've gotten. Um, but my sister as well has said she's willing to help and same with my son. So like this week, I'm going to be chipping away at some tech stuff. And then also getting in touch with uh, with Bellevue College and the contacts I have there to start opening up a conversation and a, and a dialogue. Well, yeah, it's it's been 15 years, uh, <laughs> and the world moves pretty fast. I mean, it's not like you're cut off, but yeah, uh, you know, it's it's you're getting a pretty limited filter of the world uh, while you're in there, and and like 15 years, the tech tech has moved very fast. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like a joke. I'm like, you know, the silly movie or like, you know, um, Back to the Future. Mm. You know, and there's so many too, you know, sci-fi movies, but people are calling call me Marty McFly. You know, I, I get out and like everything has changed. There's hoverboards and people are doing <laughs> Zoom calls. Like the phone, the last phone I had was a Nikia. I think it took pictures and I think it, it was able to text, but I never had text before even. Mm. and it's <laughs> it's wild but i tell you what um i know after a while i'll look back and i'll realize like okay it, it was just another challenge and mm. i asked for help and there was mm. plenty of people willing to help me mm. and i got the light up shoes i'm tap dancing all over the place <laughs> yeah if you got those i think you can take on just about anything really <laughs> i look forward to meeting my uh, dance instructor too and you know i don't I guess I'll bring the shoes for, uh, you know, the break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to, if there's, if there's like an end of semester project or like you have to choreograph your own end of semester <laughs> dance, you got to yeah. work those shoes into the show somehow, you know, maybe like it starts with the lights off and it's just the <laughs> shoes move in and then like the music yeah. kicks in and the lights come on or something. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so incredible. Uh, you know, like I said, words, I keep, 
going through some of my paperwork and I got a list of, you know, feelings like words and a descriptive, uh, how to emote better. And it, there's really no words, you know, being thrilled and excited and, and overjoyed. They, they still don't fully grasp the way, like mm. I, I wake up and it's just full speed ahead. Well, like you said, you've, it's basically 15 years of Christmases <laughs> and birthdays <laughs> and everything else just sort of, you know, compressed. Yeah. So it's all, it's like that spring is uh, stretching out now. <laughs> Yeah, it's infectious. Everyone else has been feeding off it too. They're like, wow, like when I see my family and friends and meeting people for the first time, they're like, they keep saying like how infectious my uh, positive attitude is. And, and I get to share some of my story too, that, you know, well, look, um, even though I was in prison for 15 years, hard work pays off. It didn't just mm. come to me. I mean, I had to work, I had to dig in deep mm. and not just in the education part, you know, the, uh, my thinking errors and things I struggle with and addiction and uh, you know, accepting things I did or didn't do. And then, you know, it's just endless. Like I just made a, a decision uh, shortly after I got locked up. Maybe we can talk about that in another meeting, but I just decided that I'm going to change everything about my life, everything. Mm -hmm. And of course I saved math for last. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, hey, I don't to blame you. I don't blame you. You got to, you know, Got, got yeah. to get some of those other things under the way, uh, out of the way before, uh, before you take on math. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, when I've talked to a bunch of other guys going into like the GED courses and classes and, and, uh, they, a lot of guys have come up to me and asked me questions and, and it's inspiring that they asked me like, how did I get through it? And like, what did I do? And, and they, they always save their, their math test for the last and, and I always encourage them anytime they need help, I'll, I'll do whatever I can. And, and of course, whatever questions I don't know, I'll uh, refer you to Christopher Haven. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Christopher Havens told me too, which was another thing that he goes, look, a lot of people have asked me for help and a lot of people aren't willing to put in the work. So mm -hmm. just so you know, if you're not willing to do the self-study, uh, it's not even worth you and I getting together. So that was another like, okay, that was, that was surreal. Like I had to actually ask myself, like, am I really willing to put in the work? Because I had seen people too go to Christopher and with enthusiasm, like, okay, I want to learn this or maybe help me with the test. Mm. And then they fade and they get frustrated and they quit. And then they, they stop hanging out, uh, stop meeting with them. Yeah. You know, so that's it was, the, the, the real, the real unfortunate part about mathematics is it's not a spectator sport. <laughs> you know and i i, well, I wish true. that it was you know i've got i've got this whole uh i don't know if you can see it this whole shelf full of textbooks <laughs> i would i would love there's so much cool stuff in there i would love to be able to just pick it up and read it like a like a chapter book or something and just have the knowledge <laughs> and, and and think about all this very cool stuff but the problem is is that no matter how good you are you have to sit down and you have to do the actual uh, problems. And it's, it's kind of unfortunate because like, as you've learned, there is cool stuff in math. There is yeah, things yeah. That, are, that are enjoyable and you, you never would have thought like, oh, there's something cool in there, but it's, it sucks because there's this barrier, right? With, with yeah. music or a painting, oh, anyone can look at it and go, oh yeah, that's cool, <laughs> I like it. Uh, or like, Oops. oh no. Oh, it lost you again there. I got, yeah, there was an incoming call. I just, ah. I got that down now. <laughs> you're, you're a popular man now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, with the, with the math thing as well, where uh, I would ask Christopher sometimes, like maybe bring me into his world and share a little bit about what he's working on and who he's working with. And of course, it, it was very difficult to grasp even the smallest aspect of where he's at. Mm. But he always took the time to like just bring me into his world, and that's what really inspired me too to get into the PNP. And prior to that, before I wrote my bio to Luke, Luke is my mentor up there in Alberta, Canada. Mm. And I got I, he opened up a book and he had logic and set theory. And I tell you, like like you were just saying, I got it like piqued my interest, but it almost it was almost like a. I, I stood back and I thought, why? I never assumed I would uh, enjoy, like actually want to learn something different aside from something. Cause I was just on the, on the path of, I want to learn where I'm going to like, I'm going into math 80, 
87, 97, and now I'm in, I'm going to math 99. So I was on a straight line. I didn't want to learn about anything else mm. with the time that I had. So, but when I, when he showed me a little bit of set theory and some logic, I was inspired and I got mm. it. I went back and I, he gave me some books and I just, I couldn't turn the pages fast enough, even though I wasn't understanding a lot of it. Like it, it like, um, it, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, why, what's this emotion that I'm feeling? It was, it was curiosity. And mm. I just went all in. And although I didn't get very far before I went back to my regular studies, it implanted a, uh, a good experience in my mind that, wow, like I can go somewhere with this on the side that does had nothing to do with my major that, uh, you know, even like hiking and biking, it's, it's in that nature where I'm like, Hey, right. I'm interested in learning math on the side just for, uh, a, my curiosity. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you've been bitten by the math bug. Yeah, I know. I was bitten. <laughs> That's what happened. I freaking got bit, man. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. 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 So, and, th and then that's where he encouraged, he encouraged me to set me up with someone in the PNP and then he broke the PNP down and I was like, okay, I, I still feel like, you know, s s like very immature in my math uh, where I was at. However, he encouraged me to like, Hey, it doesn't matter. I got something for you. I got someone that was, it's willing to help you in any aspect of your life even. And then that motivated me even, ev uh, even more. Yeah, so I wrote my bio and I heard back from Luke. You know, it took a while. That's that's part of the the small issue is like, you know, it's snail mail. And so if mm -hmm. you, I, I've told other guys, if you aren't on it about writing as soon as you get a letter back with like, you got to have notes prepared. So say if it takes almost a month to get to you, you better have something prepared to send right back because mm -hmm. it takes, you know, a minute to get to him or her. So when I heard from Luke after I shared my bio and my life goals and where I wanted to go and what my hopes and dreams are, Oh, his letter, his return letter was so, so inspiring, so encouraging. And that's when I knew too. I'm like, okay, like I'm, there's no, there was no doubt that moving forward, like I, I'm going to make it, I'm going to succeed in whatever I do in life. And everything in the past was completely in the past. No more self doubt. Uh, his encouragement and is willing to help me not only with math, but like him sharing his goals and his dreams and, and his struggles with me, even uh, it just built this connection, like for the pro social environment that I'm seeking to um, surround myself around in the community here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Like, well, even, I'm, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad to hear that it had that, uh, that impact and uh yeah, the program's growing, but it, uh, you know, will will reach other people in the same way. You know, it was basically going back to like I was saying, putting all the Christmases together. Mm -hmm. When Luke wrote me, it was like, you know, hearing back from Santa Claus. You know, <laughs> I actually got a letter back <laughs> as a kid, you know, writing Santa, you know, up in the North Pole. That to me, that's where Canada's at. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, pretty close, pretty close. We actually yeah. just had a, 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 a big, uh, bit of a heat wave here yeah um, you may not too. you may not associate canada with heat waves, <laughs> but, uh... but yeah the pnp and just you know christopher has had also inspired me to, to know that he planted the seed that you know he's like you know marshall that where you're at today in life that we we really value who you are and how far you've come in life that we would like you to be involved somehow in the pnp and he was like anything you can think of or we can suggest for you you just take your time get situated out there in the free world and uh let's stay in touch so i'm really looking forward to being involved in something that's also helped me hmm. more so like the uh public relations or sharing my story like i'm yeah i think uh uh or oh, your your screen froze a bit but can you still hear me? Hey, there you are. Okay. <laughs> did you sorry. catch did you catch that last part? Uh, sorry. Did you happen to catch that last part about me wanting to be involved with the PNP? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just I okay. Just, good. Yeah, I think I think I caught all of that. I'm hoping good. that I hope that uh, everything kept recording though. Um. 
yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm not, I'm not opposed to trying it again. Like, you know, even to the, the, like you were saying, the tech issues, uh, mm. we could do this whenever. Yeah. Well, yeah. If we, if we need to, uh, if we need to record again, that, uh, uh, that would be, that would be fine with me. Uh, yeah. But so, uh, so yeah, you've also been planning on doing some of your own recording, up uploading yeah. uh, videos, starting your own YouTube channel. So uh, if, if uh, whoever's watching this, if you happen to be watching in, in a little while, once uh, Marshall's YouTube channel is running, uh, uh, please, Marshall, remind me when that happens. I'll, I'll, I'll add the link okay. to the description below so, so people can Absolutely. find that. And uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be looking forward to uh, keep, keeping tabs on your, on your journey as it progresses. Awesome. Yeah, like so many people have said you know, along the way too, like, oh, I have to write a book or share my story. Or, but I mean, lately, the last couple of years has been, you have to do a YouTube channel or podcast or both. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, uh, at first I'm like, why, why, why would I, why do I need to, or why would I want to, or what's the significance of it? And people continually re reassure me that my story has impacted so many people's life about where I was and where I'm at and how I got there. And a lot of it has to do with, with education. Mm -hmm. and the support through Christopher Havens. Right. And they're like, look, with all your love and support and your family out there too, like so many people have been waiting for me and to be a part of my life that they want to see me succeed, that they're like, they want to watch me and my experiences. Like when I went up hiking, we did like a, like a photo shoot, my sister and her awesome friend, Sarah, she, uh, builds, uh, she has a company called monster head or excuse me, monster love. And she makes these big, like paper mache, like hats, heads, Mm -hmm. And we did like this really cool photo shoot and rolled down a hill like kids and had a blast and um, did a little dance video up at the top of the falls. <laughs> but also too like receiving my dirt bike and jumping up and down and being excited to receive that and riding dirt bikes with my son for the first time in 15 years. And, you know, just even experiencing going to, I went to Walmart and to like the mall and I was like a kid in a candy store, just all the, you know, fresh, new and, and all the items and things I haven't seen before. And it's like being in Disneyland every day for the first time. Mm. So, I mean, I'm just like, you know, I can't hold still. I'm just like doing a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And going to a restaurant and eating food and like everything is so good compared yeah. to prison. <laughs> Even holding like silverware was an experience mm. instead of having a plastic fork, you know, sport. Right. Right. So yeah, people are like, look, we, we would love to follow you and see your experiences. And um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to, uh, to shine the spotlight uh, on you and the and the PMP. I mean, it, it's yeah. been an enjoyable experience uh, uh, for me with with my pen pals, going back and forth talking about Oh, you got more than one? Uh, just one at the moment. Just one okay. at the moment. I've, I've been thinking, I've been thinking, uh, ooh, maybe, maybe another one, but I am pretty busy as it is. So yeah, we'll yeah. see though. We'll see because yeah, if I can time them, so the, uh, the letters just come in between, maybe, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe it work out. I don't know. Yeah. For, okay. For now I'm just going to try and get more, uh, more volunteers in general. Yeah, that's absolutely. Uh, that's the plan now. Well, I plan on too, you know, when I, when I get involved more in the, on the campus there at Bellevue, that I'll be sharing my story as well. And I would like to just put it out there wherever I'm at, that if anyone would like to volunteer, you know, how, how to do that and who to get in touch with, with the social media and all that too. Um, yeah. Be sharing, sharing the good news. It's inspiring too, you know, even, even my family, they're not, uh, they're not too big in education as far as like, you know, doing any classes or courses lately, but like my sister did college years ago and, and uh, you know, people are inquisitive, like, well, what is it like, what does it take to become, uh, you know, a mentor, mm. you know, is it like, is it just math? And so they're maybe a little bit more descriptiveness that I'll learn how to, how to share that with people of like how to, you know, the criteria, mm. but I think that'll come with time too. But also for, you know, like the other aspect of people in prison uh, to getting the word out and then like really setting up something that's solid that um, opens up their perspective of wanting to do something like this and why. 
And I'm hoping that my story inspires people back there as well. Like maybe they can set up some type of, you know, um, they can share this in one of the classes once COVID is completely over and school starts again, they could, you know, mm -hmm. pop this up on, on their laptop in class and show the students that, look, I'm living, I'm living proof that if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, that, that would be, that would be fantastic. Cause I, th I think yeah. that's what it takes is the, the living examples. Right. And sure. And yeah. Yeah. So, and I do think that's why it's, uh, you know, it's, it's worthwhile to be doing the stuff on, on YouTube and other social media uh, platforms. Cause that, you know, for better or worse, that's, that's one of the main ways we're communicating with each other uh, these days. <laughs> you know, it's how we, it's how we get our info. So it's, it's, it's the way to spread that information. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I was, I was teasing Chris for a while ago. I was like, you know, these math mentors out there that, you know, they're, they're typing letters. I think that, you know, for funsies one day, they should have to do a handwritten letter because, you know, we, we can't type a letter out like that. Mm. I mean, there is a way you, you can do it like through JPay, you know, and then you would get a copy of it and send it off. But, you know, let's, let's check your handwriting out. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, trust me. Uh, <laughs> my, my mentees don't want to see my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But yeah. So any other questions too, um, please feel free to set up, as well like more of these meetings uh because i know like after we discontinue this today like a lot of things will bubble up like oh man like i wish i would have talked about that mm -hmm. so yeah a lot of you know like i said i've been overwhelmed a lot in a good way with emotion and with support but it, it's still a lot to process uh not even just the freedom aspect but like uh, what i just accomplished is walk you know surviving 15 years in prison and then you know now I'm heading into college here, you know, shortly and am I prepared? So that's something I'm really trying to stay focused with and not letting the self doubt and anxiety of, uh, have I bit off more than I can chew, so to speak. Yeah. Well, uh, we're basically at, uh, at an hour at this point. So I, I, I think this is a, a good stopping point, but I, okay. I, I yeah. don't think, I don't think this will be the end of our uh, conversation. Cer certainly not informally. I'll yeah. be chatting with you at the end of this week, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think we'll have to have you as a guest again on the, uh, the, the prison math podcast. Yeah. So yeah, thanks again uh, so much for for joining us. And yeah, uh, thank you. I, I wish you Bye the best uh, on your journey. Thank you. Oh my goodness, have the best day ever. I'm starving. <laughs> I'm gonna go get something to eat, and I'm gonna eat whatever I want. I think I might have some pancakes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Take care. Thank you so much. <laughs>